What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Mechanism version 10. And today guys, we are going to be setting up ethylene production and then using that ethylene to generate power. Now, if you have not seen last episode, I would highly recommend you go and watch that. In it, we set up biofuel production, which we have in front of us right here. And the reason it's so important is because biofuel is the main component in producing ethylene. During the processing steps we're gonna set up today, there are a couple of things we combine with it to actually produce the ethylene, but the hardest one to get is going to be the biofuel. So it's definitely important that you have a large supply of it if you're looking to produce a ton of ethylene and use it to actually generate power for your base. Now, you may be wondering why this is not sufficient for power generation, and for early game, it actually is. The bio generator generates plenty of power, it does a phenomenal job, but if you want to bring this setup to sort of a mid-tier power generation setup that'll be able to hold you over for a while, you're gonna need to make it into ethylene, which is going to pretty much double the amount of power you're gonna net from each equivalent biofuel. Now, the reason I say that is because you're gonna use multiple things of biofuel, per processing step to produce the ethylene for 100 millibuckets. So obviously it's not totally one-to-one, -one, but if you do have the calculations, including all the energy you're gonna spend actually doing the production steps to get it to the ethylene, you're still gonna come out with almost twice as much power, which is definitely important because we want the most bang for our buck from this setup, since I'm not really looking to make any more of these farms, they're very loud, they take up a lot of space compared to what we're setting up today. And it's a little bit of a pain in the butt compared to what we're going to do today to set this up. It takes way longer. So trust me when I say it's definitely a lot easier to just add this step on instead of trying to make an even more efficient farm. So there's actually not a ton that we have to set up today. Uh, there's about three or four different machines, some of which we've worked with before, and that's all we need. So we come over here for the crafting. Nothing is crazy expensive today. We are going to be making the electric pump, which we've worked with before, very simple, because we need water for this setup. We're also going to be making the electrolytic separator, which again, we've worked with before, and the reason being is we need hydrogen for this setup too. And so the water is gonna be pumped into both the electrolytic separator and into the new machine, which we haven't worked with before, and it's pretty much the crux of this entire setup. It's where the processing is gonna happen, and that is the pressurized reaction chamber. So everything is gonna get put in here. It's one machine that's gonna do all the processing. You're gonna put everything in, including the biofuel, and the ethylene is gonna come right out with a byproduct of substrate. And then we lastly have the gas burning generator, which is where we're going to put the ethylene to net all the power we're gonna be getting. So four different machines, two of which are new and two of which are very simple and very old. And so we'll grab all this stuff out from here. We're also gonna be making a couple miscellaneous things. I am going to be making another basic bin just because we're gonna be storing the substrate. We need to get it out because eventually it will cause a backup in the system and it won't be able to generate any more power for us. Uh, I don't really think we can use it for anything. Um, I know it definitely has some uses, but none of them are super critical. So if you have the option of just dumping it and getting rid of it, you can do that too. But it's definitely something you got to deal with because eventually once it fills up with a full stack, the entire process will stop. And then along with that, we just have a couple different um, basic pipes and tubes and stuff. We've got the universal cables, the mechanical pipes, and the logistical transporters, just so that we can move things around if we need. There's not really any reason to make this setup super compact. Um, but we're going to try our best. So first things first, we'll make the electric pump. Then we'll make the electrolytic separator. Uh, not really going to go over what's used in those because we've already made them before and they're very simple. Now the pressurized reaction chamber, thankfully really is not that expensive. Um, but there is a lot of stuff in here that we haven't actually worked with before. So you're going to need the basic chemical tanks. You're going to need two of those. And then you're going to need a dynamic tank, which really isn't that expensive. You're gonna use steel ingots and a bucket for it. And then everything else is just really simple, two steel ingots, an enrichment chamber, which is a little bit annoying because that one is its own machine you gotta craft, and then two basic control circuits and infused alloy. So we're going to make the pressurized reaction chamber. There we go. And then the last thing is the gas burning generator, which again is something we haven't really made before, but not too expensive. We're gonna be using the electrolytic core, just like in the separator, two steel casings, four osmium, and two infused alloy. Okay guys, so we are back and I finished fixing my mistake. You guys probably noticed it, but if we look in my inventory right now, I was wondering why I did not have sufficient material to make the gas burning generator when I went to craft it on camera. 
And it turns out I wasn't crazy. I did not count the materials wrong in the chest. I accidentally made two electric pumps because I did not realize that there was enough overlap in material that we would have stuff to make too. So when I clicked it out, I actually made two since for some reason I shift clicked it out uh, to make the maximum amount when I thought it would be one, but we actually wasted a bunch of material and made two. So I had to go and get more stuff to actually make the gas burning generator. If you guys saw that and noticed it, you were probably cringing. We're just gonna leave this in here so we can pretend like it never happened. And hopefully at some point in the near future, we'll use an electric pump so I don't feel as stupid. But now we have everything to make the gas burning generator yet again. And we can finish up the crafting too by making the basic bin to store the substrate in. And now it looks like uh, we still have a couple extra things in here that I was going to use to make sure we had enough. But now we should have everything, uh, all four of the machines, if you consider the electric pump a machine, the basic bin, and the various different methods of transportation that we are going to need. So now we can come over here and start setting it up. We're just going to break the bio generator. I know it's going to waste a little bit of the stuff that's in there at the time uh, right now, but... We can start setting it up over here and I'm probably going to adjust the wiring on this too just because we have a lot of stuff that we're going to have to be moving around and if we want to keep it relatively clean and compact there's probably a better way to do it. So pretty much right here we can put down the pressurized reaction chamber uh, if we want to and I'm going to try and think this through because this is going to have the biofuel input directly into it. And so if we were to put this down right here, we'd easily be able to have the output on the left of this with the input for that on the right of this. We just need to make sure that everything else can get in here. Now, one thing that we can do is put down the electrolytic separator facing the other direction. So with the hydrogen going out the left, we can just leave this here. It's all good to go. And now we need to pump water into both of these. The electrolytic separator obviously needs water to produce the hydrogen. And then the pressurized reaction chamber actually needs a little bit of water for the recipe itself. That's what's gonna be going in the left input right here for the fluid. And so it's easiest if we just put the pump down right back here actually and then it's going to put the water out the top and so we'll just need to pipe it right here and right here and then we're probably going to run the power underneath obviously we're going to have to redirect how the items get into the crusher since those are coming from underneath it right now too but i think that's the easiest way to do it since these three are all going to be run right next to each other so we're going to put the pump down right over here we'll put the water down and then we'll make sure that the pumps energy input up oh, once we get stuck down there we're gonna make sure the pumps energy input is right there because it wants to be uh facing the way that the power is going to be coming in we cannot change the power input or the liquid output for this one unfortunately like we can with a lot of the other machines so we just got to orient it correctly and we're going to want to come down here now just so we can start working with some of this stuff and we can run the basic universal cables right down here so both of those get it and then we can just put the dirt back down and hop back up and now we can make sure that we're piping the water using the mechanical pipes here through to the back of the pressurized reaction chamber and the electrolytic separator so once we have that we will put back down these slabs down here and I believe we should actually be pretty much good to go in terms of actually getting the production going for the ethylene other than having to redirect this pipe. So if we come down here, we have the option of bringing it up the back, which I think is our best case. So we have the logistical transporters. So what we'll do is we will break this right here and we'll have to reset up the inputs for this, but we'll put the universal cable down below it and we will just redirect this right over here bring it up and it'll be fine once we change uh, the back input for the crusher to actually be something. So that should be good. And then once we actually have this producing the ethylene, we'll start working with actually pulling out the substrate. And the really the easiest way to do that is just, we can do it right now. I'm going to put down the basic bin right on top of this uh, for now. There's better ways to deal with this, and I will eventually, but I'm just going to put that down right now because it's going to give us a larger buffer before this thing stops running that we can deal with. I doubt we'll even come relatively close to hitting the max on this for the time being. And then we can just put down the gas burning generator right out the front, and 
we should be good. I kind of, hmm, I actually want to put it like this, and then we're going to be getting the power coming out right there, and so we can just go like that. Now I'm going to have to clean this up because it looks kind of gross down here. We do have some smooth stone slabs because I foresaw this being something that would bother me. So we can put these down just because I don't like seeing the dirt down there. And it looks like there's one more area. I don't know. Can we reach over there to actually put down the smooth stone slabs? That's the question. I don't think so. I mean, this whole area is going to have to get fixed with that because it's going to continue to bother me. I don't. Did we just put down a slab underneath the water? We did. That does not need to be there. Okay, so that's sufficient for now. This at least looks nice from the front. But so the gas burning generator is going to have the ethylene pumped out the front, and then it's going to generate the power. So now comes the time to set all the different inputs and outputs, the fun part, the part that confuses everybody. So we'll go in and we'll start with the crusher. So this one is auto eject is on because it was already working. The output is out the left, which is what we want, but we need the input to be in the back. So right here, that's going to be red and that's going to be set to nothing. So now the back should be connected. We've got the melon slices coming up the back when we have space, we've got them coming in here and this is pushing to the left. And if we go to the pressurized reaction chamber, we need the input and we're just going to want it to be regular input. You have the option on this one to be input and output. We want the input to be on the right. And so then the rest of these, we do not need to have as the uh, item input. If we look at it, that's red. And then over here, we want this to also be an input. Well, it's not technically for that. We want this to be an input for because um, we're on right now. We're on items. If we go to uh, fluids, um, we want that to be the input input. So we've got input for uh, fluids and gases here. The reason it's important is because we need fluid input on the back because we are having the water come up there. And then we need the hydrogen input uh, to be on the left side of the machine because we have the hydrogen coming in there. So if you have this setup coming in the same sides, you'll be fine considering for fluids, everything is an input. And then for gases, the output right now currently is on the right. That's not what we want. We actually want the output to be on the front. And the reason that's important is because we're going to be uh, outputting the uh, front, which is the blue output which is going to be the ethylene into the gas burning generator. And so that should be good now. And this should default with the electrolytic separator um, to outputting out the uh, left. So we should be cool with that. Uh, so I believe now if we were to give this sort of a power jump start, we should be all set to go. So if we throw down the bio generator, well, if I throw it down, in the correct direction and I know I need to figure out what the key binds are for the configurator um, but if we set this up and I'll let it run for a bit it's got some power to burn through we'll grab the biofuel out of here because we can just dump that into one of these machines eventually um, but you can see the system's running and that's because we have the hydrogen being produced over here you can see that the oxygen's going up eventually it'll be dumping excess if your machine stops running that's probably the first place to look because if your oxygen gets to its capacity and you're not producing hydrogen anymore then this machine will eventually stop functioning you can also make sure you look at the substrate uh, and that's one more thing actually we need to make sure that we have the output um, for the top and auto eject on we can set that just to blue because we got items coming out the top and there we go we have the substrate out in the bin uh, but yeah so everything is actually good now and you can see the gas burning generator is running so we can grab out the bio generator stop using that and so this should actually now be a uh, sort of self-sufficient setup it's going to be able to power itself and just continue generating a large amount uh, as this works and we'll be putting upgrades in these obviously I want to eventually quiet these down if this is going to be running in our base 24 7 there's no way I'm listening to this constantly since it's a little bit annoying uh, and the nice thing is this has got a pretty big internal buffer and it's able to generate a large amount of power if you actually have it running at max capacity so this will be perfect for power generation for a very long time 
Uh, and I would definitely advise you guys if you're looking for a pretty cool power generation setup that's not just setting up a ton of solar panels somewhere, this is the one to go with. And if we look, I don't know if we can see, but down there, let's see if we can try and see the number of how many melon slices we have. Like 560-ish or so, and that's with this having been running and actually making biofuel for a long time, and for a while, these were not even fully grown. You can see that some of these still aren't fully grown. We're just getting super unlucky with the growth ticks coming on those. So not even running at full capacity, and we have more than enough to put in a bunch of upgrades in these machines and generate a lot more ethylene. So hopefully you guys think this is a cool setup because I definitely love it. I'm super excited to upgrade this and see how far we can take it. And uh, I've never really done one like this with an actually fully automated setup. The last one I did was with a really poorly automated basic sugarcane setup, uh, which was pretty lackluster. So I pretty much set it up just to go over it, not to actually utilize it. But uh, this one, this one's something special. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. One thing I do want to point out before we hop off is I did finally put a roof on the base. Uh, I also changed it a little bit outside. I added a little bit more onto it. Uh, up at the top to make it a little bit taller because I kind of wanted the lofted ceiling feel. So let me know what you guys think. I like how it looks. I, it's pretty simple. I did not want an elevated sort of uh, roof like you would have on a regular house. I wanted a pretty flat one like this. And I wanted to have a bunch of glass on it because I definitely like having a lot of windows. And I just thought it looked cool being able to see out the roof. Eventually, I might actually add in a second floor, in which case we will get rid of all this glass. But I like it for now. We really don't need more room than this for the time being. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I know I was supposed to move all those things inside. I did not yet. I just, oh, I'm so lazy when it comes to moving the rest of the stuff inside. But now we're, we're slowly, we're slowly chipping away at the to-do list of things off camera other than just prepping for the next episode. So building the base is now done. Now it's really just moving those things inside and getting them hooked up to this power source instead of the subpar solar panel power source going on out there but again guys that's going to be it for today hopefully you enjoyed today's episode and i will talk to you later standing in a glass bowl at the end of a black hole cold lost and upside down faces rolling past me all my memories rolling vastly